guys, Gangster Granny, Chapter 14, Nosy Neighbor. Ben couldn't help himself. His eyes darted towards the window. For a brief moment, he saw a dark figure wearing a strange hat peer through the dirty glass and then quickly disappear out of view. There was a man peering in at the window, said Ben, breath said ben breathlessly. I know, said Granny. I told you not to look. Shall I go out and see who it was, said Ben, trying to hide the fact that he was more than a little frightened. Really, he wanted Granny, Granny to go out and see who it was. I bet it was my nosy neighbour, Mr Parker. He lives at number seven. He always wears a pork pie hat and he keeps spying on me. Why? asked Ben. Granny shrugged. I don't know. I imagine he has a rather cold head or something. What? said Ben. Oh, no, not his hat. I mean, why does he keep spying on you? He's a retired major, and now he runs the Neighbourhood Watch scheme in grey clothes. What's Neighbourhood Watch? asked Ben. It's a group of local people who keep an eye out for burglars, but Mr Parker just uses it as an excuse to spy on everyone. The nosy old git. I often come back from the supermarket with my bag of cabbages and he's hiding behind his net curtains spying on me with a pair of binoculars. Is he suspicious about you? said Ben, more than a little panicked. He didn't want to be thrown in jail for aiding and abetting a criminal. He didn't really know what abetting meant, actually, but he knew it was a crime and he knew he was too young for prison. He is suspicious of everyone. We have to keep an eye out for him, young lad. The man is a menace. Ben went over to the window and peered out. He couldn't see anyone. Burring! Ben's heart missed a beat. It was, it was only the doorbell. But if they let Mr. Parker inside, he would see all the evidence the police would need to send Ben and his granny straight to prison. Don't answer it, said Ben as he ran to the middle of the room and started stuffing all the jewels back in the tin as quickly as he could. What do you mean, don't answer it? He knows I'm home. He just saw us through the window. You enter the door and I'll hide the jewels. Me? Yes, you. Hurry. Bring. This ring was more insistent. Mr. Parker had left his finger on the buzzer for even longer. Ben took a deep breath and walked calmly through the hall to the front door. He opened it. Outside stood a man in a very silly hat. Don't believe me? This is how silly his hat was. Oh, can I get the picture up there? Boom, there you go. Yes, said Ben in a squeaky high voice. Can I help you? Mr. Parker put his foot inside the bungalow, so the front door couldn't be closed on him. How are you? He barked nasally. He had a very big nose, which made him seem even nosier than he was. And he was already seemed, he already seemed extremely nosy. Because he had a big nose, he also had a very nasal voice, which made everything he said, however serious, seem a little bit absurd. But his eyes shone red like a demon's. I am Granny's friend, spluttered Ben. Why did I say that, he thought. In truth, he was in a terrible panic, and his tongue was running away with him. Friend, snarled Mr. Parker, pushing open the front door. He was stronger than Ben, and soon forced his way inside. I mean, grandson, Mr. Parker, sir, said Ben, retreating back towards the living room. Why are you lying to me? He said, taking several paces forward as Ben took several paces back. It was as if they were dancing the tango. I'm not lying, said Ben. They reached the living room door. You can't go in there, yelled Ben, thinking the jewels were still scattered all over the carpet. Uh, why not? Uh, um... Because Granny is doing a naked yoga. Ben needed a dramatic excuse to stop Mr. Parker barging through the door and seeing the jewels. He was pretty sure he hit the jackpot as Mr. Parker paused and furrowed his brow. Sadly, the nosy neighbor was not convinced. Naked yoga? A likely story. I need to talk to your grandmother right away. Now get out of my way, you nasty little worm of a boy. He said as he shoved the boy aside and opened the living room door. Granny must have heard Ben through the door, because when Mr. Parker burst into the room, she was standing in her bra and knickers in a tree pose. 
Mr. Parker, do you mind? Said Granny in mock horror that he had seen her in a state of undress. Mr. Parker's eyes spun around the room. He didn't know where to look, so he fixed his glare on the now bare carpet. Uh, excuse me, madam, but I need to ask you, where are those jewels I saw a moment ago? Ben spied the silver jubilee biscuit tin poking out from behind the sofa. Surreptitiously, he edged it out of view with his foot. What jewels, Mr. Parker? Have you been spying on me again? demanded Granny, still in her underwear. Well, I, uh, I had good reason. I was suspicious when I saw a young gentleman enter your property. I thought he might be a burglar. I let him through the front door. He might have been a very charming burglar. He might have weaseled his way into your confidence. He's my grandson. He stays every Friday night. Ah, said Mr. Parker triumphantly. But it's not Friday night, so you can see why my suspicions were raised. And, as the head of the Great Clothes Neighbourhood Watch, I must report anything suspicious to the police. I've got a good, I've got a good mind to report you to the police, Mr. Parker said Ben. Granny looked at him curiously. Whatever for? said the man. His eyes narrowed. They were now so red it was like there was a fire in his brain. For spying on old ladies in their underwear, said Ben triumphantly. Granny winked at Ben. She was now fully clothed. She was fully clothed when I looked through the window, protested Mr. Parker. That's what they all say, said Granny. Now get out of my house before you are arrested for being a peeping Tom. You've not heard the last of me. Good day. Oh, you've not heard the last of me. Good day, said Mr. Parker. With that, he spun on his heel and left the room. Granny and Ben heard the front door slam behind him, and they ran over to the window and watched him scuttle back to his bungalow. I think we frightened him off, said Ben. But he'll be back, said Granny. We have to be very careful. Yes, said Ben, more than a little alarmed. We'd better hide the tin somewhere else. Granny thought for a moment. Yes, I'll put it under the floorboards. Okay, said Ben. But first... Yes, Ben? You might want to get dressed. All right, that's the end of chapter 14, guys. We'll be back with chapter 15. Thank you.